Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today is episode 2 of our Fabrics 101 series. As I promised you last week, this will be a continuous series about uh, various types of fabrics available in the custom fabric world and especially through the also oh pretty custom fabrics company and their website. Today I I'm going to talk about the second most popular uh, fabric base in my household but the number one fabric base across the fabric community and so is in my opinion that is by far the number one seller and the number one base used for garment sewing and that is the uh, oh so popular cotton spandex you can see cotton spandex with various uh, abbreviations throughout the sewing community you will find it as cs for cotton spandex you will find it as cl for cotton lycra uh, and this would be the two most popular options or sometimes you see it as custom cotton lycra which is uh, what also pretty offers um, but like i mentioned in episode one if you're not familiar with the difference the uh, spandex is a synthetic um, additive that's da added to uh, fabric, in our case to cotton fabric, to uh, add elasticity, more than the elasticity given by the fact that it's a neat fabric. So uh, spandex, also known as elastin, has, there is, um, is that additive, uh, that synthetic additive that's added, and a brand name for spandex is Lycra. So uh, when you see CL, it stands for cotton Lycra, and it's actually um, somewhat of a mistake because not all bases are made with the brand name Lycra, but they're all made with spandex. So um, the, the most appropriate name for this fabric base would be cotton spandex unless you know for sure that the content of the fabric you're purchasing is Lycra, the brand name Lycra, you, your best bet is to call it cotton spandex. I did mention uh, last episode and uh, I will mention it uh, again today, so I do want to take a couple of minutes to talk about knit fabric in general. What is a knit fabric versus what is a woven fabric? Cotton spandex, like bamboo spandex that we talked about last time, is a knit fabric, which means the yarns are knitted in loops of fabric. Instead of being woven like you do, you know, when you do a lattice pie, that's a woven, uh, uh, the yarn is woved, weaved together like a lattice and that creates a woven fabric whereas with knit fabrics the yarn is uh, knitted through loops just like you would when you do an actual knitting of a hat with yarn and uh, uh, knitting needles so uh, that's the main difference a knitted fabric because it's built through yarn loops has natural elasticity now, it has natural elasticity, but sometimes not enough, hence why we add spandex to it. It has a natural elasticity, but maybe not enough recovery. So, um, neat per se is elastic because of the way the fiber is um, weaved together to create the fabric base. However, the grade of the elasticity is, give, is also given by the type of fabric, you're, the type of yarn you use, in our case cotton yarn, uh, and the amount of spandex you add to it. There's two kinds of knit types, there's a weft and um, warp. The weft knit is um, a, a knit that's done with a single yarn, and it's basically just like uh, an, on, on a much, much bigger scale, just like you were to uh, make yourself a knitted blanket. So it's one yarn, one needle, obviously on a much bigger scale, creating loops and then threading it in various 
methods and ways to create either a knit or a purl. I don't know how much you're familiar with the knitting terms, but it's pretty much the exact same, same thing on a different scale. There's also warp knit, which are made using multiple yarns and multiple needles, but the same concept of threading fabric through loops. Those are, um, that method is used for mainly texture knits. It is not the case, so right now we'll be focusing on solely on weft knits, which are the types that we'll be discussing throughout these videos, such as the bamboo or the um, uh, cotton spandex. So while we are on the topic of terminology and how you might see uh, knit named out there in the sewing community, especially if you're a beginner, I did want to briefly touch base about the various knit types available. So uh, as a big category, you have knit, and based on the way they're weaved and how many needles are used, you have to work, and then you have weft, like I mentioned, which is one needle and one thread, either in a loop to get those tubular needs, not available in the custom world, or straight back and forth, back and forth to get the actual base. Well, depending on how the knit is done, being um, meaning the knit pearl style, you can have three types of knit. One is a jersey, which is the custom cotton lycra. Most custom cotton lycras, uh, most prints in the custom the cotton spandex are jersey style. Then you have interlock, which uh, you can find at Joanne most of the time or your uh, local shops. And then you also have the rib knit, which again is available in mostly in um, Joanne or your local um, quilt shops if they carry knits. But I don't think I've seen rib knits in the custom world, custom printed. But uh, jersey is the one mostly used. Jersey is uh, the fabric is weaved just the same way you would a basic knitted blanket. So one thread, loops, and then one line or one um, like loop, circle loop, but that's again rare and not available in the custom world. So one line back and forth and on one side is smooth, which is the front, that's where the print is done. And then one side on the back, I don't know how well you can see, but I'll post a picture of, of a close up. You can see on the back, you can see the knitted uh, rows vertically that go along the selvage. So that is the way a jersey looks like. So on, fr on one front is smooth, the back is a little bit more texturized and you can see if you stretch it especially, you can see those neat lines. Um, interlock fabric, it's basically um, put together by doing one um, knit stitch behind the first one. So imagine it as you were knitting a sweater, right? So you do one knit and then you go one behind and one in the front, then one behind and one in the front and one behind. It kind of looks like a double knit, but you cannot really separate the two of them. So uh, that's what interlock is. You can find interlock at Joanne. Personally, I am not a fan of interlock. The only thing I would use interlock for <laughs> would be pajamas because there's pretty much zero recovery on that one. You'll see the knee um, imprint there as worn. There's, there's decent amount of stretch, but usually just horizontal, not much vertical stretch. It's um, not uh, a fabric that I would wear outside a lot, unless it's a super, super, super baggy item with a lot of positive ease because the recovery is so poor. But an uh, um, interlock will have smooth front and back. You will see if you zoom in on an interlock piece of fabric. And the third one would be a rib knit, which is basically instead of doing knit, 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 knit stitches, you do knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl to create that texture in the rib, which, which gives it extremely good recovery and elasticity 
commonly used for t-shirts, for neckline t-shirts or cuffs because of its great stretch and recovery. Again, I have not seen many, um, many rib, if any, rib or interlock custom printed. The most common one is jersey, which is what we'll be keeping the focus on right now. Now that we've narrowed it down to what is also pretty uh, custom cotton spandex, so it's a knit, it's a weft knit, it's a jersey knit, let's talk about the actual fabric content. So, I did mention earlier, uh, a little briefly earlier, that it is a cotton base fabric, which means the thread used to weave the base are made of cotton, which is a plant. We've seen how it looks like. Uh, so one of the most commonly used fibers for clothing and amazing to wear. So it is made of 95% cotton and 5% spandex, which I've mentioned before. It's an additive that's added to the actual um, cotton fiber to create its extra elasticity. The uh, weight is two for the custom printed also pretty uh, cotton spandex is 240 to 50 uh, GSM which is grams per square meter which is a standard measurement in the fabric industry. You might see, cut, uh, you might see measurements like ounces per yard in this case, I did weigh earlier, one yard of um, also pretty custom cotton spandex is, the printed one, is 13.5 um, ounces, which is a great weight, in my opinion. Much lower than that, it's too flimsy. Much higher than that, it's too thick. To me, this is a, an optimal amount of weight when it comes to the weight of the cotton lycra. Around 13 to 14 is the optimal weight for my personal preference. Again, we are all different and uh, it's absolutely normal to be. Just like for bamboo spandex, also pretty does have solid cotton spandex to coordinate beautifully with their custom cotton lycra. So, as far as solid goes, it is yarn dyed, which means the actual fiber is dyed, not the print goes on top of the uh, white base. So, because it is yarn dyed, it is the same color on the wrong side and the right side, which means it's a different um, way to achieve the colors so while it will coordinate beautifully it will never be an exact 100% match because it is not done in the same way it is done totally different for this one has the actual fiber being dyed and this one is printed it's digitally printed on the um, a white cotton spandex base However, they will coordinate beautifully and most importantly, they are similar weights so you won't have a heavy custom cotton lycra and the flimsy or ultra heavy uh, solid that will make uh, the um, garment itself a little abnormal, let's say. So they're similar in weight. Uh, this is, like I said, uh, about 13.5 per yard, ounces per yard. I've weighed this one too, and it's 13.9. However, the custom um, cotton lycra, the solid one, is wider. So that uh, extra weight, it's probably coming from the width. So as far as they go, the, um, it is 95.5 when it comes to the fabric content, 95, span, uh, 95 uh, cotton, 5% spandex, pretty much the same weight and very beautifully coordinating. See, two, two different prints, totally unrelated, coordinating beautifully with this yellow. So I would highly encourage you to stretch your back and grab yourself some solids for uh, my kiddo uh, for example my oldest 
doesn't want to use custom prints anymore. He's too fancy for that. He's too cool. He's a teen, almost. He's a preteen. But he does love solid. Uh, so he still wears Mama Made if I make it in solid. And if he let me, maybe I'll HTV something on it. But not even that. He's just simple, either a striped person or a solid kind of a t-shirt. Nothing fancy, not, not too many graphics on it. My little one, on the other hand, loves his custom cotton lycra. So um, that's what I wanted to mention. Remember, this is 70 inches in width. This is uh, 58 to 60 inches in width. So just like bamboo in episode one, the solid is a lot wider than the print, but weight-wise, they're pretty much similar. That's why they work beautifully together. Another thing that I wanted to mention is the recovery. The recovery is phenomenal. The 5% spandex in it makes it absolutely gorgeous. What is recovery? If you're not familiar or you haven't watched my first episode, recovery is when your fabric bounces back. So you stretch it and it bounces back to its original side. So I stretched it 100%, so I doubled the, the width. And when I relax, it goes exactly the way it was. It's not stretching and those then goes back just like this. No, it goes back all the way, the exactly the same way it was, which is phenomenal for garment making, which is something you will not see with interlock. Remember we mentioned interlock a little earlier? Jersey tends to have great recovery most of the time, whereas interlock, you'll stretch it like this, it will stay like that. So great recovery me means no elbow um, marks, like you know when you have your elbows on the table, then you stand up and then you have like a bulging, <laughs> neat fabric here because then the fabric didn't go back. So when you stand up from sitting down on an um, CL or custom spandex uh, pant, everything will go back to fitting your body the way it was before. It will, you'll not have saggy knees or saggy elbows or uh, when it comes to using your CL for neck bands or cuffs, again, a cuff is very tight, which means to put it on, you'll stretch it quite a bit and you want it to have great recovery so it goes back to the intended look. Same thing for the neck band. Let's say you have a crew neck, because um, this is a scoop neck. This is also bamboo, so I'm not talking about the dress, but the difference between crew and scoop. This is a scoop neck, so it's pretty low. A crew neck comes like around your, your collarbone. So that means this opening is pretty small and you want it nice and flush to the skin. So for you to be able to put it over your head or imagining, imagine sewing for little ones, and you know little ones have their head a lot bigger than an adult compared to the body. So you need that opening to be pretty stretchy. So it stretches over the little one's head, and, but then it recovers and it goes back to a nice flushed, uh, flat neckline. So custom, uh, also pretty cotton spandex or solid, also pretty cotton spandex is phenomenal for neck bands because of its great elasticity and its recovery. And speaking of elasticity, both the solid and the printed have a two-way stretch or a four-way stretch, if you will, depending on which uh, um, kind of uh, category you use. So if you use two versus four, that means this one has four-way stretch, meaning stretches left, stretches right, stretches up and stretches down. Like I mentioned uh, last week, one way and two way versus two way and four way are two different uh, ways of saying pretty much the same thing. So it stretches horizontally and vertically, which in my way, in the way I mention it is two way, vertically and horizontally. And let me just show you. Uh, or four way because it's left, right, up, down. So great stretch. And we can also see how much it is. Let me grab a ruler. So 
to measure the stretch of a fabric, take a ruler and a little bit of fabric. This is a gorgeous floral. I'm going to hold my finger on one side, put it at the zero mark, then hold my left finger at the four inch mark and I'm going to stretch and I'm comfortably stretching to let's say seven I could do more but I don't want to push it so if I'm stretching from four to seven that means it has a 75% stretch horizontally if I stretch from four to six it would be 50% if I stretch from four to eight which it does, it's 100%, but it's, it's like really stretching and nobody would wear clothes like that because since it's printed, you could kind of see the white and you don't want that. So I would say it has a comfortable stretch at 75% horizontally. Now let's go see the vertical stretch and we're going to do the exact same thing, but now we're going to go along the selvage. So this is your selvage, the vertical. So we're going to take hold of our finger to the zero mark and then the other hand to four and then we'll stretch from four to I would say it goes almost to seven. Yeah, it goes to seven. So I would say the custom uh, also pretty cotton spandex has 75% stretch both horizontally and vertically. So four way stretch horizontal and vertical 75% let's see our solid same thing I'm going to go first horizontal which means cross grain and I'm going to go from 0 to 4 and stretch oh this one goes to 8 easily so I would say it's about a hundred percent stretch horizontally so a little stretcher from the sol of, of the, the solid one. And for vertical stretch is seven. So that's 75%. So for the solid, it's 100% stretch. So it's basically, you can double it in width. And then 75% vertical stretch. So definitely comparable to the printed which means again they go phenomenal together buying yourself some solid will definitely stretch your back uh, for um, when you buy your custom prints because you can mix and match it tends to be a little less expensive the um, solid so definitely great for stretching the back plus remember it's 70 inches in width so you're gaining at least 10 or 12 inches extra width f uh, compared to um, the custom printed one let's talk washing instructions just like we did for bamboo my recommendation for washing your custom cotton lycra or, or cotton spandex is to wash in cold and line dry if you're able to do that that will preserve the life of your custom prints longer than anything else personally I don't do that unless it's like really dark really really dark colors I do wash cold but something like this I wash in warm water with uh, a like color so I would put these two together and these two together and this I would probably put it together with a black solid or red so I would call this as in, I would put this in my dark load this is the beautiful illumination print one of the most popular also pretty prints look at the vibrance of these colors but I digress so let's keep the vibrance uh, and the beautiful colors uh, for as long as possible simply by washing them in cold water and line dry I do tend to wor use warm water and tumble dry on low because I'm, I have no patience and I, I admit that I don't treat my custom garments the way I should but I am 
I do have a privilege and being sent so much fabric to work with and to share with you that I realized that I should take more care of it but there's so much fabric going on in rotation in the washing machine and in my closet that sometimes it's just easier to to wash them together it does fade faster the warmer the water you use the more faster it will fade and obviously the more you wash it the faster it will fade cotton spandex is a natural fiber so anytime you print on a natural fiber the color will fade quicker than if you were to print on um, um, polyester base which means washing in cold will definitely give you the best chance and to avoid peeling avoid washing with velcro items in it um, don't wash with buckle or um, snaps anything metal in the washing machine because it will tumble it and it will rub against it and it will decrease the quality of your cotton uh, spandex also uh, last thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to washing instructions keep in mind I, and I don't have I don't have any black but let's see I'm trying to find two similar colors and I think I'm still gonna go with the yellow Keep in mind that these two yellows, they're very similar, you see? The shoes and the print and the solid, pretty similar. I would definitely use these two together. Keep in mind that in the wash, a printed knit will fade quicker than a yarn dyed knit. So you might see, let's say you use a panel of custom printed fabric also pretty or any other ones they're pretty much all uh, created um, printed the same way mainly the quality of the inks and the quality of the vase vary but the process is pretty much the same so keep in mind that if you make a garment with a panel like this and then you use a solid fabric for the back and the sleeves when you, you when you wash it the panel will tend to fade quicker than the solid and that's absolutely normal it's nothing against uh, cotton spandex nothing ha that has nothing to do with also pretty or its quality it's a fantastic quality it's just the nature of the beast it's the way things are and that's the way we have to accept them so I've seen that a lot in um, especially with black black is something that pops really well so you have a t-shirt that's on a black background with a panel on a back background and then you use the sleeves in a solid and the back in a solid and you can tell you can definitely tell that the solids are darker black than the custom print because it's one it's printed black and one is the fabric the fiber itself is black so Keep that in mind when you uh, sew with custom cotton spandex. If uh, you follow the instruction and wash cold and line dry, you should avoid this problem relatively easy. But in time, it, you will eventually get to this point. But it will be, it can be in a very long time or it can be in a very short time. The next topic, the next topic of the conversation is the colors because I keep mentioning this in the washing process, I do want to make sure that I uh, underline the fact that while the colors coordinate beautifully together, as you can see, look. And this two would work very pretty together they will never be the same solids and printed because again the way the fabric is uh, put together and the dyeing process is one has the actual thread dyed the actual fiber dyed and one is like a piece of paper imagine when you put a piece of paper in your printer the, the fabric uh, the paper is printed on top but not on the back so two different process will yield you two different greens let's say you put the same code for the green on the either RGB or whatever 
RCMI, I think they're using, but I'm not sure. Anyways, let's say you put the same green on both, it will not yield the exact 100% same color when it comes to solids and printed because the process is different. It will be very close, but it will never be 100% the same. So that's why I wanted to touch base briefly about that. So you know when you decide how much and where to place your solids. Uh, my suggestion would be to use coordinating colors. For example, if I want to use a solid with this print, I would not go for a black because black is predominant in the background here. So it will uh, pop, the difference will show a lot better. So for me, for this print, I would much rather use a red, orange or coral or a green or a white or a light blue like this one. So I wouldn't do a black with this. This way it's not going to pop when the discoloration occurs differently or to begin with they're not colored the same way. Whereas these two together, for example, see how well they work together? When the, when the item starts to fade in the wash after multiple, multiple washes, it, it won't be that uh, obvious that the printing and the colors were done different on the fabric. So that would be my first tip for you. Use coordinating colors. Don't use exactly the same color. So we don't, you don't see the difference. Next, I wanted to touch on which patterns and which styles of patterns are great for cotton spandex. But before I do that, I wanted to talk about drape because the drape of the fabric, as well as the fabric content, will decide uh, which patterns to use and what is good for. The uh, also pretty custom cotton spandex is, has great drape. It has structure as well. So it kind of is a great mix of uh, structure and weight. I would call this a medium weight fabric. I wouldn't call this a lightweight fabric, absolutely not, or a heavy fabric. So I would personally call this a medium weight fabric. So it has folds. Remember I told you how to check for folds on the drape of a fabric. So there's plenty of folds here, but it's also it also has some structure. So speaking of folds, let me grab some bamboo so you can see with the naked eye how the folds look between bamboo that we've talked about last week and cotton spandex. So see, I have the same fabric. And if you look at the way it will, the way it, it uh, drops from my hands right now is the way it will drop on your body when you sew it. Let's see if I can. I, I don't want my, the background to distract from the way the fabric folds. So see, look at that bamboo, how many folds and the way it looks. And this is one yard of cotton spandex and one yard of bamboo. So it's apples to apples, just a different base. You can definitely see the difference, right? Look how many folds in the um, bamboo and how many in the cotton spandex. So this is definitely a more structured fabric. There's still plenty of folds, whereas not as many as this bamboo, still plenty which means it still has great drape so i would definitely use this for dresses so it's not that structure that you wouldn't work for a kid's dress or even an adult dress now that we've talked and you've seen the drape of the also oh pretty custom cotton spandex let's talk about which patterns this would work for Starting with adult panel, adult patterns, because that's my jam. For adults, this would work great for hoodies, for uh, winter, fall wear. Some of my favorite hoodies are the uh, Sinclair Lottie. It's a great color blocking hoodie. 
or the Calypso or Sinclair has various color blocking hoodies. There's also a free t-shirt called Linnea, I want to say. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But there's also a free t-shirt from Sinclair that uses, would be amazing for cotton spandex. It might be in kids as well, but I do know it's available in adults for sure. Um, cotton spandex is great for uh, the patterns for pirates hoodies available. It's great for all the made for mermaids one. There's so many. I love it. Uh, and again, Love Notions has the um, North Star polar hoodie that would work great with cotton spandex and that's available for um, in various styles. I believe it's not just in uh, women's style. I think it's available in men as well. It's Constellation and North Star. So pretty much your favorite hoodies would work great in cotton spandex, especially this one because it's medium weight while it still has some drape. So it will still uh, hug your body nicely. Another thing that's great for cotton spandex is t-shirts, plain basic t-shirts, plain basic jersey t-shirts would work great. It will not drape the same way as bamboo, but a lot of people prefer their t-shirts a little bit more structured, especially if they're more fitted. Uh, bamboo spandex is great for a fitted t-shirt and pretty much all patterns designers out there have a basic t-shirt. Either a v-neck, I, I love me a v-neck in, in cotton spandex for sure. And it works great for summer, it works great for fall. Cotton spandex has, because it's a natural fiber, it has great absorbency, it has great cooling effect. Personally, it's not as, I don't find it as cooling as bamboo, in my opinion, but it's also because of the weight. Bamboo is much lighter, so um, it doesn't hug, it's, it's not super tight to sew. So let's say I make the same t-shirt, same size, same options, one in bamboo and one in cotton spandex, the cotton spandex one will feel a little tighter. And a lot of people do prefer that. The um, bamboo one will, will just fall um, drape on the body, whereas the cotton spandex one will feel a little more fitted. Another thing to make with cotton spandex is pants. Pants in cotton spandex feel great. This um, type of base works phenomenal for jogger style pants, for yoga style pants, for pants that are more on the fancier side, let's say, like the Sabrina Slims, the SOS pants for patterns for patterns. The Sabrina Slims is from um, Love Notions. I'm sure Made for Mermaids and Sinclair have their own patterns or Rebecca Page has great patterns for that uh, but if pretty much all pattern designers have their own style of either a tapered leg pant or a straight cut pant those were great again a joggers with or without cuff would work great for this um, shorts are great for cotton spandex leggings are great for cotton spandex most leggings pan, um, patterns require minimal of 50% stretch both vertically and horizontally and this one has uh, 75 so it would work great. Do keep in mind that cotton spandex is printed on a white base so check with the pattern that you're using. If, you're one, if you want to use it for leggings check that the stretch requirement fits within this which means the ease, which is positive or negative, for leggings, there's always negative ease. And I will make a small parenthesis, I don't want to bore you with the details, but negative ease means that the pattern uh, itself, it's drafted to be smaller than your actual, let's say, thigh or your hip measurement. So let's say your hip measurement is 40, the pattern will be drafted for uh, the finished measurements of the hip will be less than 40. It could be 35, it could be 37, which means your fabric will be stretched 
when put on and when worn that's negative ease so the pattern is smaller than your actual body positive ease like you have in hoodies uh, or um, various shirts or jackets means the pattern itself is larger than the actual body that it's put on so for leggings it's always negative ease so this way it stretches and this is what i wanted to show you custom fabric is printed on a white background so keep in mind that this is a this is a zero ease so it stays on my hand just like this okay not stretched at all it's black the once you start stretching it you get to see the fibers in it which is absolutely normal you get to see the fiber that's printed on so keep that in mind that when let's say you have a pattern with a huge negative ease you're gonna wear your leggings like this so the image will be distorted it's normal has nothing to do with also pretty it's just the way it is so for that a solid will be better for leggings than a printed one if you if you really mind the seeing that white cast that white background because a solid is yarn dyed when you stretch it it has the same color no matter how you put it it has the exact same color so if you use this for leggings then the, there will be no color difference when stretched and worn and it will recover to the same great uh, shape it had before so keep that in mind if you're sewing leggings with your uh, custom cotton spandex as far as dresses goes i love a nice structured dress so one of my actually my all-time favorite pattern for custom cotton spandex is the love notion title the title is drafted perfectly at least for my body type for cotton spandex i am not a cl wearer i am as you can see including in this video i am a bamboo wearer and like i said before that's all you find in my closet but for the occasional print that i just fell in love with and i had to have or panel that i had to have or sometimes i buy mystery boxes and there's cl in there uh the title oh and it comes in girls and women too the title is my most favorite uh, pattern for cotton spandex. A beautiful circle skirt would work great. It will have a lot more structure, so a circle skirt will not fall vertically. When, when worn, it will fall a little bit more of an A-line because of the volume and the weight of the uh, fabric itself versus bamboo. And I can go on and on and on and on. And I... I try to keep my videos under an hour long and I, but trust me i could go on and on about patterns and fabrics forever and ever but i did want to mention that there's dresses that can be made out of these pants joggers jacket zip up hoodies like the go-to jacket like the ollie jacket from sew a little seam oh, would work great in cotton spandex hats winter hats work great if we're talking about accessories um, beanies are great in cotton spandex because while it is a natural fiber and it's cooling it's also keeping warm versus um, the uh, bamboo which tends to keep its coolness the cotton does take the warmth of the body so it will keep you warmer than bamboo so it's great for hats and winter beanies as well you can also line it with a sherpa or something warm uh, for winter time and still have this beautiful uh, cotton spandex on the outside cardigans work great for this i made one of my most favorite thing that i've done with cust custom cotton spandex is the love notion metra jacket it's a simple super easy pattern for a knit um jacket no buttons no closures or anything it's absolutely gorgeous and it it's elegant if you can make it fun in prints like this you can make it solid you can make it classical see not inspired by anything there's a, a variety of prints with also pretty for everyone in your family from the most picky one to the most uh disney obsessed one <laughs> 
So I tend to go for things like this. Now, if I want a more demure item like this, or you don't really see solids in my closet, but I know I do need to, to spend my time making some solid clothes. I am a printed girl for sure. But there, check out the website for also pre, both the retail and uh, pre-orders because I'm sure you'll find something there for everyone in the family, regardless of their preferences when it comes to prints or solids. Lastly, I wanted to talk about some tips that I have for you when it comes to sewing cotton spandex. Because of the weight and the structure of the also pretty custom cotton spandex fabric, I would say it's very uh, domestic machine friendly. A lot of you are probably new to sewing, new to the custom world, maybe do not have an arsenal of sewing machines behind you. This my friends did not happen overnight so don't think for a second that I woke up one day and I said oh I'm gonna buy 10 machines sewing machines and, and there's still some you're not seeing in here there's one there there's one under there so, but anyways I digress don't think for a second that it starts like this these are built in time I've been sewing for over 10 years I've been in the community working with various pattern designer and fabric hosts for a long time so don't stop yourself from treating yourself and the loved ones and enjoying the process just because oh I don't have a cover stitch I don't have a serger I only have a sewing machine I only have a little Walmart sewing machine that's fine that in the back right there you see that one right there did you see the handle that was my first ever sewing machine it's a little brother that has a, it's a, an embroidery sewing machine combo with a 4x4 four four, uh, embroidery hoops tiny tiny that was my first ever sewing machine and it works just fine I just don't have any more space for it because I and use for it anymore but it it will always be there it's like it has emotion sentimental value but that's how I started so again if you only have a sewing machine don't say oh I can sew knits because I don't have a surgeon no in time, you'll probably find that it, it will, you will want to invest and it will make your life easier sewing knits with a serger and a cover stitch. However, if you just have a sewing machine, you need to, to know two important things to sew custom cotton spandex on your sewing machine. One, you need the right needle. So for knits, get yourself ballpoint needles. Don't use regular needles. The ballpoint needles the tip of the needle is is more blunt than like a microtex or um, standard needle which is super pointy and because that one is going to perforate through the fiber itself and um, stitch it whereas for needs you don't want that you want the, the needle to go in between those fabric uh, those uh, fiber loops remember when we discuss how neat is done there's always loops and thread through it well you want the needle to go in between those loops so using a ball point needle will not tear the fabric neat doesn't fray and you want to keep it that way you don't want to destroy <laughs> Uh, for lack of a better word, the actual fiber of the knit, you want to stitch basically in between uh, all those loops, uh, the knit and purl loops. So that's why you use a ballpoint needle because that one will not perforate the fabric, it will wiggle itself through those loops. So every time you sew an, a knit on your sewing machine, whether it's bamboo, whether it's cotton spandex or any other needs you may choose use a ballpoint needles the size of your needle will vary based on the size of your garment will vary uh, the size of your um, will vary based on the weight of your fabric so for uh, cotton spandex I would say you can go with a 12 size needle without any issues for something thinner uh, I would go with a smaller needle but I, I think a 12 would be, or a 10 would work just fine for cotton spandex. Again, key ballpoint, not microtex, not standard. 
second most important thing is to adjust your tensions to the fabric that you're using. Not all fabrics are created the same, not all cotton spandexes are created the same. So adjust your tension by using a scrap piece of fabric to make sure it doesn't stretch your fabric when you sew it. So a, a big tension and a small stitch would stretch your fabric too much and you don't want that. You want to have it somewhat uh, non-wavy. Some waviness is absolutely normal when sewing knits, but you don't want it to stretch. So I would say when you sew knits on your sewing machine, go with about a three length and maybe uh, instead of a four, the standard is usually 2.5 length for the stitch and about a four tension. So if you sew cotton spandex with your machine, I would go with a three length and a 3.8. So a smaller, a lower tension, not by much, not, not loose, not by much, and a slightly bigger stitch length. If you're making a garment that does not have uh, negative ease, let's say you're making hoodies on your sewing machine, you can use that when you know there won't be any stretch. Now, when it comes to uh, items like leggings or anything that has negative ease or, or jackets or hoodies with a crew neck, something that will be stretched and recover, you need to apply the same theory to your stitches. So you'll be using a zigzag stitch or you'll be using a triple stretch stitch on your sewing machine or um, one of those narrow lightning bulbs. If you want a special video with different type of stitching, what are they good for? Let me know in the comments below and I'll gladly make other videos. But briefly for this, you need to use a stretch stitch. Most common triple stretch stitch, zigzag stitch, stitch or that lightning ball st uh, stitch. Because then your garment will not pop. So when you pull it over your head, you won't hear the seams pop, the stitches popping because you used a stretch stitch that a, a straight stitch that does not stretch and it will start to pop and you don't want that. So stretch stitch, adjust your tension and your stitch length for both of these situations, ballpoint needle and you're good to go with your regular sewing machine. If you need additional help, remember I mentioned in last episode, use and you, you find that your machine likes to eat your fabric which will happen much less with cotton spandex than bamboo because it's thicker. Uh, use water soluble stabilizer between the needle plate and the fabric and the presser foot and the fabric. So, and then you won't have a problem. But you probably won't have a problem to begin with with knits because if you adjust the tension correctly, because it's a lot more structured than bamboo was. Knit fabric in custom spandex does tend to roll. So when you wash your fabric, which I encourage you to do as soon as you get it in your house to get rid of all those chemicals, you will see that this is not washed. This I just got in the mail. So I didn't get a chance to wash it, but I will take it to the wash very soon. So you will see this edge curl like this after washing. And that's normal. It's, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately, with, with custom cotton spandex. You don't have that with bamboo, <laughs> but you do have it for custom spandex. So to get rid of this, I recommend pressing with a lot of steam. And if you have a starch spray, spray that before you sew on all your edges. So it will keep it as uh, straight as possible for when you cut your fabric or when you sew your fabric. But do keep in mind um, this, uh, what was it, Mrs. Myers? Maybe I'm confusing it. There's, there's a. I'll find it and I'll add it to the a starch spray that I used. I ran out of it. I'll add a photo here in the um, in the video when I when I edit it because I, I can't remember the name right now. This is something. So that definitely helps with the rolling of the fabric and to keep it straighter. Steam, steam, steam. Press, press, steam. Steam is the third uh, tip that I have for you when it, when it comes to sewing cotton spandex. 
press your seams, press your hems, press your stitches. Waviness when stitching, whether it's with your sewing machine or your serger and, and uh, cover stitch, is normal. There's always going to be some stretch or some light waviness when stitching. The good news is if you press and steam your garment, you will have crisp hems, crisp edges, crisp side seams and so on, even though they looked wavy when you pulled it off the sewing machine. So do not skip pressing and steaming your cotton spandex. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something new. If if you didn't, I hope I at least kept you company and uh, chatted with you in the background while you were sewing. Let me know in the comments below what do we want to talk about in the next episode. I'm thinking I will talk about woven in the next episode because I'm, I'm trying to go by popularity and I feel like these are the most popular. Um, but eventually I, go, I will go through all the... Um, basis that also Privy has to offer in their um, fabric gallery. But I'm thinking next episode we'll talk about woven. But do let me know in the comments if there's anything specific that you want me to go over in this series. Any questions you might have that you want me to make sure that I touch uh, during the video, that I answer during the video. Or if you have any questions about cotton spandex or specific patterns, I will gladly help uh, you out. I'll leave, as always, in the description links to the uh, Also Pretty website and their Facebook group. So make sure that you join the Facebook group to keep up to date with their sales, with their new pa with their new releases, and the rounds. This what I'm wearing right now is actually a print that's coming in the next round, which I absolutely adore. Look at these beautiful sleeves. This is the Sinclair Skater Valley, the add-on skirt that's high and low with the sleeves from, I think is B, just add-on sleeves from the B. There's an A and a B add-on package. I think this is the B with the flutter. This is the angel cutout sleeve, bamboo spandex. So this will be available in the next pre-order. So. I do encourage you to join the Facebook group. You'll find all the details in there. And that is pretty much it for me today. Thank you once again for joining me. And I can't wait to talk to you in my next one. Bye.